So um, yeah, today we're going to talk about the, the solar super, super storms, uh, planning for the internet apocalypse. Um, you know, essentially this paper talks about uh, the internet crashing and dying uh, in case you know we have a really big uh, solar storm. Um, uh, as an example of a really big solar storm, the paper uh, talks about um, uh, a Carrington event, which is a, a storm, a solar storm that happened in 1859. So like way before our modern technology, right? Um, that being said, um, you know, at that time, the storm was pretty much capable um, to uh, knock out most of the telegraph networks in the um, uh, in North America and Europe. Um, and um, yeah, you know, telegraph networks, um, obviously, uh, that's just like a bunch of wires that uh, go from one place to another. So, and uh, the super storms, the storms, they can create this um, uh, essentially electric current in, in those wires, right? So, um, and that can be dangerous for any kind of equipment that is you know, practically attached to these wires. So uh, they say that um, you know, at the time in 1859, um, even when the wires were powered off, like they, they disconnected the power, uh, they still had like enough current, enough electricity in the, in the system to send uh, telegraph messages, uh, you know, just from the, from the current generated uh, you know, because of this storm and the magnetic field fluctuation in the, in the Earth's magnetic field. So, um, yeah, um, let's briefly talk about, you know, what this paper is uh, trying to study, right? It, it looks at the internet backbone, um, which, you know, roughly consists of a bunch of data centers and transmission cables. And, uh, you know, unlike 1859, right, our cables are no longer copper. Um, you know, most of the internet runs on fiber optics, which, you know, should be okay because fiber optics uh, cable fiber optic is not conductive. However, um, you know, these long cables uh, that, um, you know, may go like um, under the sea uh, or, you know, long distances on land, um, they need the, the signal repeaters because the, the signal actually deteriorates quite substantially um, over distance. And uh, these repeaters, they happen about every 50 to 150 kilometers. So that's uh, what, like uh, 30 to 90 miles uh, of distance, right? And, you know, this repeater is a device that needs power. So, you know, despite the cable being a fiber optics, you know, we just send in the, send in lights, uh, you know, send in photons, um, the, the repeaters need power. So the cable actually has a conductor, a wire inside of it, right? To, to power these repeaters. Um, and that means that, uh, you know, these cables are, again, susceptible to, um, you know, the, the, this kind of interference created by the solar storms. And um, the paper also notes that um, it's actually very costly and time consuming to repair um, those cables, um, uh, especially for the cables that um, are underwater cables. Right, and, uh, and that's because they need to have like a special ship that uh, will go uh, to a place where the damage has happened and they need to, you know, more or less like lift the cable up and, you know, um, repair it and, and put it back down. So it's quite costly and quite time consuming. Um, so now let's uh, briefly talk about, you know, the solar super storm, uh, solar storms rather. So um, I, I quote the paper here. Um, you know, they, they talk about the, the coronal mass ejections, you know, known as, commonly known as uh, solar st storms. And uh, these CMEs uh, are directional ejection of large mass of highly magnetized particles from the sun. Now, the good thing is it's perfectly fine for people. You know, Earth has a magnetic field and it, it, it stops most of that stuff. And, you know, people, you know, took, totally fine when, when these things happen. Um, however, you know, these uh, CMEs, when they actually hit Earth, and it has to be like a, a direct hit, you know, on, on the planet, they produce uh, geomagnetically induced currents. Um, and, you know, these currents are um, 
dangerous for our um, equipment. Um, so why? Uh, well, long wires, like um, you know, they, they they act like power generators when the magnetic field uh, changes, right? So if if you like imagine like a a regular uh, 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 like uh, a generator or like alternator, right? There's like a bunch of wires um, uh, in a coil, and you know you have a magnets, and you may like rotate the, the, that coil and whatnot. You know, uh, essentially, from the perspective of the wire, the magnetic field changes, and that induces the current. Well, here, the wire, like you unroll this coil for hundreds of miles potentially, and you have the magnetic field changes because of this, um, you know, charged particles hitting Earth and uh, interfering with the Earth's magnetic field. So, so, like any big piece of wire will act as, you know, a generator and will have like a current um, induced in it. Um, and that current can be substantially large, right? And the paper mentions that, um, you know, it's possible to induce the current in, in those conductors and those wires that are like well above the specs for the hardware, right? So they're talking about current of like 100 amps um, where the, the, the repeaters in the, in the cables maybe can tolerate, you know, up to one amp. So, um, you know, when you have such spike of current, obviously you can fry quite a lot of um, equipment. Um, so now, of course, internet is fine, right? You know, our like networks are fine. They've been fine for quite some time, right? Uh, so, you know, how likely is that we're going to have um, a, a solar superstorm? Well, uh, the, lar the, the last large one uh, was in 1921. Um, and the one before that, that I, I briefly talked in the beginning, it was in 1859. So, you know, quite substantial time apart. Um, but again, like from the last one, it's been already more than 100 years. Um, and the impact was, you know, substantial. Uh, the, at the time, technology was limited. So the impact was mostly on telegraph networks. Um, and in 1921, there was you know, significant impact on the, on the only one underwater communications cable that existed at the time. So, you know, we do have very limited um, knowledge on how it will impact our modern infrastructure, uh, especially considering that, uh, you know, the materials are different and, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, these things are rare, right? We haven't had one in more than 100 years. And estimating the probability of having, you know, a similar magnitude event um, is very difficult. And, and, and this estimates, um, you know, again, range substantially uh, from about 1.6% to 12% to per decade, right? So, um, you know, the, the, the probability is definitely non-zero. Um, so, um, uh, you know, it may not be large, but it's non-zero. Um, and um, yeah, finally, um, you know, this um, impact from the solar storms from the, uh, from the induced currents uh, is not the same uh, everywhere on the planet. Um, and again, that has to do with how the, the Earth's magnetic field uh, works and, and, and stuff. But the, the bottom line is you get more impact uh, and, and potentially uh, can create higher currents um, in, in these conductors um, as you go closer to the poles, right? So the safest place to be for the equipment is around the equator. Uh, as you, you know, go closer to the poles, you know, North Pole or South Pole, um, you become more vulnerable to, um, uh, to these currents uh, being generated in your conductors. Um, and the paper specifically uh, talks about this um, uh, demarcation lines of 40 degrees north and of 40 degrees south. Um, so, um, so um, you know, they say that um, essentially everything that is uh, above 40 degrees north is um, at a lot uh, greater risk than the equipment that is below the 40 degrees north. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so does it mean that we're screwed? Uh, that, that's kind of the big question we, uh, uh, from this paper. Are we screwed? And, and, and they present these two uh, interesting figures that show the data center locations 
um, uh, that's figure two I put on the left, and uh, uh, long distance transmission links, um, uh, that's figure one um, on the right of my slides. Uh, and uh, the data center figure actually has the, the 40 degrees north and 40 degrees south um, lines marked so that we can visually see how many data centers are in, in this vulnerable uh, region that they, um, that they define. And, uh, you know, it turns out that quite a lot, right? You know, it's, it's you know, practically most of the stuff in Europe uh, happens to be in this more vulnerable um, uh, geographical regions. And quite a substantial amount of data centers in the North America are, you know, here as well. Now, if, if we look at, um, you know, South, um, uh, I think we're pretty safe here. Um, luckily, penguins don't use internet, so, you know, we're, we're, we're more or less good here. Um, um, now, the same applies to the cables, right? So the cables that run, you know, this like long distance transmission links. Um, you can see that uh, in the US, um, it's yeah, kind of a small image, but you can see that a lot of these cables actually come uh, from the cables between the North America and Europe. They start in the Northeastern United States. And that happens to be, um, you know, above the 40 degrees north um, uh, latitude. So, um, you know, these cables are in this, uh, you know, roughly speaking, vulnerable or more vulnerable uh, region. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's, that's also a potential problem for our infrastructure. Um, and, um, you know, to, to kind of try to put this in a, in a slightly different perspective, the, the paper uh, plots the population um, and um, the endpoints location, right? So, so you know, we see that uh, there is more, like there, there are a lot more endpoints, you know, for, for these cables, right? The cables start and end, you know, above this 40 degrees north. Um, there are like a lot of them um, relative to the population. So a lot of this, uh, you know, cables, they run up north, but, you know, relatively speaking, not a lot of population leave um, up north. So, um, and yeah, that, that's, you know, probably largely due to the you know, historical regions, uh, 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 like uh, European countries and European continents, like all of these countries have been in the vulnerable regions and they're the ones that, you know, got connected the first, I suppose. Um, and the authors do talk about, um, you know, um, Asian region being, you know, kind of in a slightly potentially better shape uh, in terms of connections. So it, obviously it's um, a lot of the Asia is less vulnerable because it's not in like above the, the 40 degrees north. Um, and, um, you know, they do have quite a lot of population. So, so, so like the population and endpoints are kind of more or less uh, correspond here. Um, so, yeah, um, another um, figures, a couple of figures that they present on this, like infrastructure and population mismatch, um, like uh, this figure shows, uh, again, kind of talks about endpoints, right, uh, slightly different uh, way to represent this data, but, um, you know, at like 40% uh, latitude, 40 degrees latitude, uh, we have under... 20% of population, but we have uh, like uh, around 35% of all submarine uh, uh, interconnection endpoints, right? So, uh, you know, relative to population, a lot more of our infrastructure is located in this more vulnerable region. Um, and, uh, you know, that, 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 that is similar to other um, uh, links, not necessarily the, the submarine links, not necessarily the underwater links, um, you know, also like um, uh, the land connections and things like that. Uh, and the figure on the right uh, shows um, like a more general like uh, uh, internet infrastructure, uh, like the routers, uh, DNS uh, servers and, and stuff like that. And it, it seems, again, from this figure, from the data sets that they use to, um, you know, kind of find the location of this critical infrastructure. Um, again, it seems like a lot of that is disproportionately located in the vulnerable uh, regions uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. 
Um, the paper also talks about, uh, you know, like the, the resilience of our infrastructure, but this is where, um, you know, in my opinion, things start to get a little more questionable, right? Because uh, like all of this analysis about, you know, where the location is of, of, the, of the infrastructure, um, you know, we kind of know it more or less okay. Um, you know, the resilience, like we, we don't know how uh, this infrastructure will behave under the, you know, uh, un under the solar superstorm, like how much of it is, start, is going to start to fail, right? So um, because we don't know it, they, they try to like see what happens under different rates of failure that may happen in, in infrastructure. Uh, they have quite a lot of figures. I, I just put the cable uh, figures, right? So, so this studies um, how many cables the yeah uh, how many cables the data cables will fail um, if the repeaters in those cables start to fail, and, and they make quite a lot of assumptions like that uh, the repeaters are every fifty kilometers, hundred kilometers, or hundred fifty, um, and uh, assumptions about you know, the probability of a repeater failure. And they also say that, you know, this is kind of uniform at this point. So they have uniform probability, regardless of whether you are in a vulnerable region or not, right? And, um, you know, uh, if you have 1% uh, probability of a repeater failing because of this, you know, superstorm or whatnot, a solar superstorm, um, you know, they say that this will impact, this will render about 25% of submarine cables uh, inoperable, right? But, uh, you know, th this, again, is quite a stretch. You know, they, they do talk about the fact that the, the, the degree of vulnerability changes as you go uh, closer to the equator, and this doesn't assume that. Um, you know, this assumes that, you know, we can fail at 1% or 10%, and, you know, everything in between, but we don't know what the failure rate is actually going to be, right? So, so, so um, I, I guess, the best you can kind of make out of this figure is that, you know, if this happens and things start to fail, um, you know, across all of these cables, um, right, e even at low probability, you know, we're going to see some, some, some impact. Um, in the paper, they do talk, they do have another figure that does take into account this like vulnerable regions, um, but um, I'm not gonna list it here. If, if anyone is interested, you can look at that. Um, in the paper. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the big question is what can we do, right? Obviously we cannot, you know, turn off the sun, uh, that would be really bad. So uh, can we power off the equipment before the, 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 the CME reaches Earth? Uh, you know, considering the fact that it takes at least 15 hours and in many cases days, um, you know, for this um, uh, uh, coronal mass ejection to reach the planet, um, you know, we kind of have the, the advanced warning, right? So, and, you know, powering off equipment can help, uh, but, uh, you know, these currents will be induced in the, in the cables that are not powered as well. So they can still, you know, uh, burn the, the, the hardware, right? So, so powering off the equipment uh, may help uh, reduce the damage, but it probably will not, uh, you know, uh, eliminate the damage entirely. And, and, and this damage is is permanent, right? Like if you put too much current through your, you know, circuits and whatnot, you know, you, you will find them for good, right? So until you can repair that equipment, you know, the, that link or the data center is down. Um, oh yeah, um, another point about the resiliency of infrastructure that I forgot to mention is they also study like data centers um, and they uh, specifically point out Facebook saying that Facebook data centers are not good because they're all uh, located uh, in this vulnerable region. Um, but um, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense for the Facebook because they put their data centers where most of the users are. But um, yeah, um, uh, coming back to the, you know, what can be done is, you know, stop focusing on this uh, northern regions, right? Build redundancies that are closer to the equator. Um, the paper has an example um, saying again, like going back to the cables under sea cables across Atlantic, um, you know, most of the cables that connect North America and Europe are um, like the, the, they have their endpoint that they start in the northeast uh, of the United States. Um, I believe the paper says there is one cable that goes from like Florida to Portugal, 
right? So, so um, you know, you, you have a redundancy of one cable uh, in terms of like direct connection between the, um, at least between the United States and, and, and Europe. Uh, and, um, you know, your other connections, they fall in that vulnerable region above uh, 40 degrees uh, north. Um, they also talk about, you know, the need to isolate this high latitude cables from the rest, right? Because like if you have this cable that starts at the high latitude, maybe, it, but it goes, you know, south, right? And so, so the endpoint is high up north um, and the other endpoint is like it, not in a vulnerable region and it connects to other networks, right? You need to electrically isolate that because you can still have the current you know, generated in this like more vulnerable region uh, in the north and go all the way to that endpoint that may be in the south. And if you don't isolate uh, the rest of your equipment, um, you know, you may fry it like down the line, right? So uh, if you have your cables in this vulnerable regions, your links, isolate them. Um, and, you know, they also talk about things like stress testing and, you know, and obviously that's important because we don't want to be guessing, right? What, what, what's going to be the rate of the failure. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's all I have for this paper. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a pretty interesting and easy read to be honest. And uh, um, yeah, the, the short story is if you put your stuff up north, uh, um, you know, it, it may fail. <laughs> or it has likely or more likely probability of failure. Um, okay.